All right, guys, we are back today on the Turbo LS Fox Body build. It's been extremely cold here lately. It's been like minus 14 Celsius, so it's been really hard to get a whole lot done, uh, especially with my minimal heat back here. Uh, but I was able to get the fuel system plumbed up. And so today I'm going to take you guys through essentially what's required for a fuel system if you want to make 1,000 horsepower E85. This setup I'm hoping to make 800 wheel width. Uh, I'll show you some of the things that are really good, some of the things that I will upgrade probably this spring, um, and yeah, maybe take you through some of the pricing. So we'll start right off up at the front here with the injectors. So these injectors are Bosch 210, and I purchased them from VS Racing. Now one thing with these guys is they are very short. So you have to use an injector spacer on there. So I had to do some measuring, find an injector spacer and space the rail up. Now I could have saved myself a lot of time if I would have just talked to Varen at VS Racing originally on the spacers because it's something that I didn't realize I needed. So over to the rail, the line that essentially connects the two at the front here. Um, that's a dash six. Now that definitely is gonna get changed to a dash eight for the springtime. Uh, the conundrum I'm in right now is I'm just spending money and spinning my tires. Uh, so I've kind of used things that I had. So the dash six line there is probably a no go. That's gonna get switched out to a dash eight. But let me just show you my regulator and how everything runs. So, snake through the mess, but that's my feed line back there, and that's an AN-8. And so, the rail gets fed from the back, crosses over to this side, comes out here, and into my regulator. The regulator's right here. Uh, what a really high-end fuel system will do is this feed line will go through a Y block, and will connect one line to this rail, one line to this rail, and then these two will get wide off, Again, you know, they'll get wide off here, back to the regulator. So this is my regulator. It's a pretty standard unit. And again, I apologize for the messy wiring in this, in this engine bay, but I just figured this is probably the best time to show you guys the fuel system. So this aeromotive regulator, um, it's a good quality unit. It's got a boost reference port on it. Um, so this line will obviously get boost pressure from the intake manifold and what happens is as the boost pressure goes up the fuel pressure goes up and the reason for that is because due to the boost pressure the injector is seeing slightly higher pressure so this should go up essentially one psi of fuel pressure per one psi of boost now this one's good to i think 75 psi and you'll see i've also got my poly fuel pressure sender in there and that goes to the computer so take a look at the lines. They kind of snake under the car. Got all kinds of junk under here. Uh, so there's one inline filter I have. Essentially these all come back to the back of the tank. So tank wise, um, I purchased a new fuel tank and I welded on one of these Summit sumps. So I'll show you what that looks like. That's the sump there. I TIG welded that onto the tank and I pressure tested it. Now, you don't wanna, you don't wanna weld that onto a used tank. You gotta get a new tank. There are people out there who say they do it with a used tank, but honestly, for the $150 Canadian that it costs for a tank, it's really not worth setting yourself or your shop on fire or blowing something up. So I would recommend just go out, purchase yourself a new stock tank. Essentially now what we've got back here is the mighty Magnafuel 4303. Uh, surprisingly, they only actually rate this at two and a half gallons per minute, which I thought was interesting. I actually phoned Magnafuel today to confirm that because it seemed low. It's only like 567 uh, liters per hour at 12 and a half volts. Now this car will see 13 and a half volts, but still that pump's not even 600 liters per hour they rate it at. So I'm a little bit you know, I'm questioning it a little bit, but I see so many people making eight, 900 wheel on E85 with these. So I think I'm gonna be all right. So Magnafuel tells you that you can mount the pump 
18 inches above the sump. So we're sitting at about 10 inches above the sump there. So hopefully I'm all right. Obviously this port on the sump gets plugged. This is my inlet line. It goes through a pre-filter into the pump. And this is that big line that goes out to the front of the car. So again, more room for improvement here. This feed line here should probably be a dash 10. Uh, again, right now I'm kind of like, I want the car running. And if I have to change up some fuel line size in the future, it's really not the end of the world. Uh, I can obviously use this plug port to drain the tank, drain the fuel out, working around fuel sucks, but trying to get a car together in minus 14 also sucks. Uh, so that's kind of why I've made some compromises here. So like I say, all the little details on here, I'm trying to give you guys the best info possible. So you probably want a dash 10 here. I don't know how much restriction one foot of dash eight versus dash 10 line is gonna cause, uh, but I guess we'll find out. So one more thing I've done on this pump here is I've mounted it on rubber isolators because these are apparently very noisy. So if you mount this directly to sheet metal, it's gonna shake your car like crazy. Whereas you can see here on the isolators, the pump can wiggle a little bit on the isolators. So that will hopefully prevent some of the noise. So let's do a quick tally up on costs here. Um, standard filter like this, and I'll do this in Canadian dollars and then we can convert it to US dollars later on. Standard fuel filter like this is about a hundred bucks. The tank was 150 bucks and the sump was another 75 bucks. Um, so that puts us at 220, 325. This pump, $750. So just in this back setup alone, you're looking at close to 1100 bucks. Back over to the injectors here. These things cost me another 750 bucks. So we're already close to $2,000 Canadian. That's about $1,800 Canadian. Um, you factor in the regulator, that's gonna push you to $2,000 Canadian. And all of the line is another few hundred dollars. So altogether, this fuel system as it sits is roughly $2,300, $2,400. So I would call that probably $1,800 or so US. So it's a lot of money if you wanna to try to make a lot of power on E85. And that's something that I learned. Um, this fuel system on C16 would probably make, you know, easily I would say 1300 horsepower if I make the couple little upgrades that I mentioned. Uh, but the problem is C16 here is so freaking expensive. You can spend five or $600 in one weekend racing just on C16. Whereas E85 here is 20 cents per liter or about 80 cents per gallon cheaper than regular gas. So even though you're using more of it, it is still way cheaper. Now, one other thing we've got mounted under the car here is this Continental OEM GM flex fuel sensor. Okay, so this is how we tell our E85 content and this thing is already, uh, I already wired my computer for it, so I just have to hook it up to the Holly. So that's the key piece right there to running E85. And these are actually surprisingly cheap. It's only $100 Canadian. So, all in all guys, what I've learned here is there's a reason why everybody runs a Walbro 450 and DECA 80 injectors, the setup I used to have, because it's easily half the price of this setup. And you won't make the same amount of power with it, but that's kind of the sloppy combo for the cheap fuel system. And I totally understand it now after going through actually pricing out and building a more expensive fuel system. And just one little sneak peek. You can see I got some new wheels and tires out back here. Uh, just trying to figure out why they don't fit very good. And I think ultimately I might have to narrow my diff up. So. I'll make a video on that. I'll let you guys know how that works out. Now, it's actually not the end of the world because I'm gonna use strange weld on ends and strange 35 spline internals in my axle. So uh, actually narrowing it up isn't really a big issue on this because I already have to weld on it. Anyways, guys, thanks for checking out the video. Uh, this car is very, very close to being running. 
and that's kind of why I've put some of the little fuel system details aside. I'm hoping actually this weekend to get the car running. You can see that is mostly complete now. I got my glass back in. It's my shiny new windshield. And really all I've got left to do is run some power steering lines down there. I'm gonna use AN lines because everything is so tight. Also run my transmission cooler lines to a little remote mounted cooler I get. After I have that, this car is ready to fire up and I can't wait to actually try it out and drive it. Uh, maybe do some cold weather flex fuel tuning with it and just wait for some, some more parts to come in before I do the diff and uh, actually kind of get this car ready to race. So as always, thanks for checking out the video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. I'm always happy to try to respond to you. I hope you learned something here today and we will see you on the next one.